Well, Calvin got stupid. <laughs> I have no idea if this is... Oh, there we go. There we go. Hey, now. and welcome to part two yes. of episode 85, because Thanks, one Mr. Calvin, Calvin Locke yeah. is an idiot. Button. I think we can all assume we're, we will try to splice this together to get one video. Our audio listeners, this will probably be a two-parter. You'll probably audio, part audio one, Audio listeners, two. I apologize. Tim will update it Calvin's, in the notes. Uh, yeah, hit the wrong button. Jesus. That's why Calvin shouldn't be allowed to touch. I, I Calvin have not, is okay, why Tim, so not have we, nice listen, things. Did, you, did yeah. you guys not see my post yesterday? Tom Brady, you're going to win this game because Calvin can't have nice things. So I shouldn't be allowed to have nice things. Well, you just proved us why, champ. Yeah, I should have. <laughs> That's a self-fulfilling prophecy, bud. So for <laughs> those of you that are just joining us on part two, uh, I'm your duh, host, Tim. Duh. With me is our dumbass, Calvin. I've got Marky <laughs> Pins up top, and I've got the Coastal Crusader, Brian, down below. I'd ask how you guys are all doing, but Calvin fucked it check up. Check part everybody. one for that. Yeah, check, check part one for that. <laughs> uh, so we had just got done talking about how Tim was going to bowl the senior pro tour yeah. pro series yes. on May 22nd. Which yeah. I am not going to bowl it. Yes, so No, because it's a Sunday, and... That's going to be a hard He's going to make a weekend out of it with Angie. You're going to take your antique uh, and the, he's going to go bowl the senior tour. No, because I got to go down there the next weekend, I think, to, to play golf. So I'm not going to make two trips in two weeks down there. Just not going to happen. So uh, I have the updated list for Saturday's Pro Series random draw teams. Uh, we'll go over that real quickly. The 10 a.m. Mm -hmm. shift. Uh, Includes uh, the colorblind guy, Nate Lees, uh, <laughs> the lefty job. Wait, hold on real quick. I had a, I had an idea of how you guys can fix the colorblind thing for Nate for the worlds and his shirts. Instead of putting his name on the back, you put the color of the shirt on the back. <laughs> so his purple shirt that's says purple. His white that, shirt that's says funny. white. That's funny. Uh, so we got Nate Lees, Josh Daly, Joey Lister, Matt Susie, Billy Bloom, Brendan O'Dowd, Austin Barnes, Harry Potter, Chris Winniars, uh, Justin Waters, John Winchell, Nick Norcross, uh, Nick Zuffalato, Bob Whitcomb, Craig Holbrook, Brian Fuller Jr., Ken Dubray, Mark Weber, Matt Hoff, Sean Taylor, Dave Malahan, Dom Pal Palladino, Jeremy Van Dyke, uh, Dan Esdale, Sean Baker, Chris Parkinson, Sonia Johnson, Justin Kochi, Steve Reno Jr., Rich Kochi, uh, Peter Crawford, Dan Schwenard, Justin Lyonnais, Phil Clough, Ryan Drago, Rich Lamone. That is your 10 a.m. shift. Your 1 p.m. Yep, your 1 p.m. <laughs> shift. Mm -hmm. Steve Walsh, Tim Matero, Jay Simino, Matt Nichols, Justin Scally, Brian Crowell, Josh Riappel, Dean Sullivan, Pete Riscatelli, Tim Douglas, Scott Douglas, Nick, Nick Leach, Det Klein, Mike McGinty, Cody 50, 50, 50, 50, uh, 50. Uh, Chris Boyver, Rich Myrick, Steve Spingola, Stu Bergman, Dave Godwin, Chris McDonough, Chuck DeRosia, Dennis Green, Brian Athern, Keith Bopre, Jimbo Aya, Dom Drake, Rick Martell, Ed Woodside, John Boudreaux, Dave Barber, Luca Charna, Bob Allard, Corey Packard, Jeff Surratt. The wait list right now is Mike McIntosh and Jeff Charlton. So top 32 yeah. out of those two shifts will make the random draw team. Portion. What is the cut for the top 32? Whoever comes in 32nd will be the cut. You know what I meant, Tim. Uh, uh, Stop being DB. Uh, Delta Bravo. Uh, where are we going? Where is it? Exeter, Exeter Lanes. lanes. Uh, Cut's going to be like 572. Yeah, I would. I was going to say 575. I think it's going to be up 600 there, but not on the nose. stupid. 600 Five, is too, too much. 580. No, 600 on the nose. All right, those are recorded, so it's Price is Right, close to without going over. Are, are they yeah. recorded, or did Calvin stop the recording again? No, no, no I stopped the recording. Stopped the red light's on, we're good. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so there we go. Closest <laughs> to without going over. I said 600 on the nose. Okay. Well, we did have something come across the uh, Candlepin chat today that I thought would make for a really cool topic. Definitely a good way uh, to end the show, for sure. Steve mm -hmm. Vadney posted... Uh, a match with Dan Murphy. Um, and I did ask, and, and he actually just replied to, to let me know it was uh, one versus one um, 
It was coming from the top five bowlers of the New Hampshire State Annual Tournament. Five events, men's singles, doubles, mixed doubles, mixed teams, and men's teams. Uh, your five versus two, three versus four, whatnot. This was the finals of the New Hampshire <laughs> State Tournament. They did Holy that Christ. final? Holy this shit. was the finals, oh, man. folks. Holy smoke. Did the guy keeping score need like four or five pencils for this? This, yeah, for those of you that it. are unaware of what we're talking about and have not seen this on Candleton Chat, Steve Vadney set the New Hampshire state record and at the time was the world record with a 1520. That's 152 Ugh. average, folks, for 10 strings. Mm -hmm. Dan Murphy, 1482. And lost. And lost. Ugh. So, Ugh. it was uh, Dan Murphy's scores went 142, 164, 132, 147, 161 for a 746 front five. Wow. 133, 159, 144, 136, and he finished with a 164 for 1482 total. Steve, that is absurd. That Steve Vadney goes 141, 164, 138, 169, 153 for a 765 front half. That's my high five. Shit. What? <laughs> and he sucked in the back half. Man, what a waste. Yeah, what a waste. I mean, God, <laughs> yeah. what do you do? 755 back half? Yeah. Uh, 154, 130, 156, 151, 164 for a 1520. The really wow. cool part, I, I will say this, the really cool part about all of this, if I'm not mistaken, there were two double strikes in the entire yeah. 10, so 20 strings. Yeah. There were no triple strikes. That's wow. absurd. With those numbers, yeah. that's ridiculous. That's a lot of spares. That's a lot so of nine fills. I'd front, love to count the nine fills. Someone's going to count the nine well, fills. In the front five, Steve had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 open out of 50. That means he had 33 marks. Yeah. Well, combined, combined between the two of them, they only dropped 41 pins. Yeah. In 10 strings. Total. Wow. Total. Um, between the two of them. And... Uh, and Murphy had one, two, three. Uh, Myrick, Myrick put those, and I, I, went, I went a little bit deeper, but Myrick put the... Va that Vadney's low three, his lowest three strings were a combined 409, and Murphy's were 401. And then I went deeper, and then the lowest three string total, so like the first three, one, two, three, two, three, mm -hmm. four, it's like three, four, five. The lowest for Murphy was 436, and the lowest for Vadney was 440. That's ridiculous. Wow. That's Where like was this again? Where did they bowl this? Strings. This was at, um, I guess it was uh, whatever Park Place Lanes and before, Sandy's. Yeah. before Sammy. Was it Sandy's? It was called Sandy's. 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 Sandy, yeah. yeah, Sandy's. Okay. Uh, in Wyndham, New Hampshire. Yep. Uh, That's crazy. You know, Dan Murphy bowls over four, way over 1,400, almost 15, and gets beat. Which leads me to a question. What's the highest you guys have ever bowled and gotten beat? Uh, 1405. Oh, oh the That's highest I ever bowled and got. I threw either 14. three strings or single string or. The, the biggest I can remember was a pro series. We bowled at Lakeside years ago. I threw like 1420 and did not cash. Wow. I, 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 I don't remember like the biggest one on one I ever bowled and still lost. Oh. I bowled. I bowled 463, which is my high three one night, and lost. Yeah, I don't. Every you know time what? I've Taylor bowled 475. Three, I don't think I've. I can't think of one where I was beat by, like my my high, or a good one. Um, I lost the decline on the Comcast show 155 to 140. That sucked, and that one that one string match thing yeah. that we were talking about. Yeah, I, yeah. I know. So two two things is one, I went four forty something and lost by seventy. 
when oh, that was to Jason Kaler as well. When Jason went <laughs> when he went five twelve against me. Wow. Um, but I mark you, and I'm sorry, fourteen oh five is not. I came in second in that one, but I did bowl fourteen ten, and did not cash in a tournament. Yeah. They took you they didn't they cash. No, they took they top seven made the money. I came in eighth at fourteen ten. Yeah. You didn't cash with fourteen ten. Nope. No, yeah. that day at the Pro Series when I threw like 14, oh. 20 something, they were cashing like the top six or seven, and I didn't even get a sniff with 14, 20. Yeah. Pins were wow. screwing so this, that day at Lakeside. So yeah. We kind of had this conversation before, and I'd like to do this on, on as yeah. we're recording. Um, there is no doubt in my mind, these guys, Steve Vadney is a Hall of Fame, Dan Murphy is a Hall of Fame for a reason. They were great bowlers back in their day. I've seen him. Both. I've been lucky enough to see him both. I bowled with Steve Adney in the Worlds. Super cool guy, um, and a hell of a bowler, and a hell of a nice guy. Um, Dan, I don't know all that well. I only met him a couple of times. Saw him bowl a handful of times. Um, we know that those pins were flying, which oh, yeah. means which means that it was probably a little juiced. And I'm not saying they're crazy juice. I'm just saying that the decks were done. Oh, they're absolutely. well taken care of. There's, there's well taken nobody, care. Of. There's nobody who can do that on uh, uh, probably like I mean, and I'm not trying to insult anybody, but on your best day on regular, you know, no. whatever pins, there's no way you're hitting 150s all day. So not, gonna, it's just not happening. I'm right? going to no. pose this question, and I posed it earlier, and. Will we see, knowing that the conditions that the lanes that we bowl on now, will we see another 1,500? Yes. I think so, too. I say, I think, no. I say no. I don't think it's out of the realm because we have to keep in mind that even though regular scoring conditions aside for, like, house bowlers or leagues or things like that, when you do go to where the tournament is going to be, and they don't take care of it that day. Well, chances are there's not going to be many big tournaments at that place. So I would be willing to think that a place is going to be done up and taken care of well, especially if there's a big 10 stringer coming into it where somebody could potentially throw 1500. Look, I watched Sean Baker and uh, who was it? Jack Ray between the two of them set the world doubles record for five strings. They were like 15. God knows what it was ridiculous. And those decks were not done, but the scoring conditions were just naturally, like, absurd. Let's just put it that way. So, yeah. yes, combined with elite bowling, with the right day, combined with the right conditions, there's nothing that you could say will never happen again, but the remote possibility of it. Okay. Let me, pre let me, I, I, let me I preface that. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I got to preface that. When I say no, okay, Yes. Could it happen? Sure. I don't think it will happen because of the conditions of the houses that we bowl in now. Right. In the States. I'm not talking Canada. I'm not talking flat gutters. I'm not talking turned up gutters, whatever. Well, you're talking like they'll never do the decks again, which I just. I'm sorry, but. And this is what I don't understand. A lot of places I, are not. Every tournament well, this is I've what I don't in the last three years and, have not had the decks done. Right, but this is what I don't understand, and I can remember this being talked about on Candlepin Chat way back when it first started, and someone said, do you want to bowl in a hard house or an easy house? And I saw people saying they want to bowl in hard houses with decks not done, and all I can say is, would you just like to give me your money, and I'll walk up and kick you in your proverbial genitals? Like, what the fuck do you, like, why? Why do you want to go punish yourself? I, I don't want well, to go pull my league <clears throat> in a stupid, juiced, holy hell house, no. But when I go to the tournament, that's when I want to see the pins sliding and moving and flying. Yeah. So Let there me, is like a give yeah. and a take out of it. And I'm going to preface this because I know I'm going to get a league that's super juiced every week. I know I'm going to get, fun. I know I'm going to, I'm going to get hate mail and I'm going to get messages from people that yeah. say, especially from some proprietors or from some tournament directors say, our plates are done. Okay. I know. I yeah. get it. Your plates are done. But you're using shit that wears off in two strings now. Yeah. Okay. Orange you're, glow is not your answer. Jesus, stop using orange glow. Orange I glow can, is awful. You're eating I can tell soap. you, 
back in the day, and I say this because I'm old and I bowled back in the day, they use lane conditioner on the plates. That's not feasible anymore. It's expensive. I understand that. That's one of the reasons why I think you're going to struggle to see a 1500 over 10 strings. Now, I know Nate LeBlanc went 1486 up in Bangor in the Can-Ams a couple of years ago. For a joke. I get it. <laughs> uh-huh. What? For a joke. <laughs> I, I, I understand that. He, be, he yeah. did his 180 something against me. I was there. I bowled on those same conditions. Okay. Flat gutters, I mean, flat I, I gutters, saw, and the pins and the pins were and the juices were de- and the juices and the deck was juiced. I saw I Chris get Sargent it. bowl eight oh eight for five at Newport back in two thousand four. Okay, and I guarantee you that day he he would have easily gone fifteen. That was eighteen years ago. Don't make me feel that old. I'm just saying. <laughs> I, I'm and all I'm saying is this: I with the right conditions in a house, Tim, it will happen. Sure, but you're not going to get the right conditions anymore, at least here in the States. You're just not. If you get a proprietor to let someone like one of us run a tournament and let us do the decks, you would get that. And then Marky could probably, if if he had the, if he had unlimited funds to take Riverwalk and take a week and do the decks and get everything fixed and make sure the pins are all right, like you could probably get a 15 in there, right, Marky? I mean, with the best of the best in there. And you do the decks? No, not, no, not, 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 not here. My, my pits are too wide. The the pits here okay. at, at Riverwalk are built to old school 10-pin specifications. When Brunswick used to build lanes back in the day, they built them to 10-pin spec. And that's why one reason why Lafayette slash Riverwalk has been so hard is because each pit is about an inch or two wider than any Which other pit Fuller's out there. Which makes Fuller's 220-something really impressive. Extremely, extremely, yep. yeah. I just... There are there are very and the other reason why I say this is when I say back in the day, I'm talking back in the 80s and the 90s, you had on any given day, you go into a tournament and there could be 40 plus people that could actually truly win that tournament. Okay, you had another 70 that would show up that Jesus, if they had a career day, they could. And then you had 50 more people that were bowling. So, I mean, you had a larger amount of people bowling. You had a larger base of, call it excellence, that bowled. You don't right. have that anymore. So you're really looking at a, you know, you're looking at a small handful of bowlers that can truly go 1,500 or on their best day go 1,500 right now. I don't think you're going to, you, the conditions have to be perfect and you have to have that bowler that is truly on. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Again, back in the day, you mm-hmm. had 50 plus bowlers or 40 plus bowlers on any given tournament that could do that. Right. Like the odds against it are massive. However, the probability is not zero. Uh, okay. You are correct. The probability is not zero. I don't uh, believe it will happen. I could be wrong. I hope I'm wrong because watching someone bowl like that oh, is it's, it's so been, damn it's cool. so much fun. Oh yeah. my god, it is so fun to watch someone. And I, I love look, somebody I, in autopilot just hitting the head pin every ball they throw. Oh my god, I, it is so cool. It is. It is. I mean, I watched doing it too. <laughs> I yeah, yeah. Look, I've never gone 15. I went 14 59. I've and never gone 14. Is my, is my high 10? And I mean. I don't. I've I've got about a dozen fourteen hundreds, and I remember most of them. And I have one thirteen. But thirteen hundred is still great bowling. Fantastic like, bowling, absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Average so, hundred and thirty for the day. <laughs> so to get up to fifteen, I mean, look, I watched. But Nathan that's like was 14, that's, that's 80 something. I watched thing, Russ Neely bowl fourteen eighty five, and it was just holy shit! Like these guys were on fire. They were making everything. Mm-hmm. And they still didn't go fifteen hundred. And that's the thing. I, I, and that it gets back to something I said last week, Tim, and I talked about it league this week with you. I think more guys could do it. I think it's awful hard to look at stuff like this, and then like you throw like, okay, let's just say to get to a fifteen, you got to average one fifty. There's a lot. Of, there's a number of ways to get there. Every string, sure. You throw a triple, yeah. and maybe that you know a triple and a double, and those are your only marks. 
Maybe you throw six marks and get there. Maybe you throw eight marks and get to 150. And, you know, like maybe maybe you don't get there because you throw a six mark 150 and someone goes, man, that's a waste. Now you're down. Now you don't throw the ball as well anymore. Like, I'm just saying, I, I think there is a, a stigma in here that you have to get to a 150 or 160 by throwing off like eight or better fills. And you don't. And I feel like the young kids get discouraged when the pro guys look at them and go, yeah, well, you threw an eight mark 160. Well, yeah, that's eight marks. And you probably should have gone 70 or 80, but that's a hell of a string. And I was telling this to Tim, like, you look at those scores that those guys had, that is incredible bowling. That is another level. And I just don't want young kids to look at that and say, okay, that's what you have to do. I know personally, like when you surround yourself with great bowlers, sometimes you get overwhelmed and you think you have to throw eights and nines on everything. And I'm just now starting, I think, mentally to go. There's a, I was listening to the Candle Pins for Cancer show and they said that there's a lot of ways to 120. And that has really rung true to me. So I, I'm trying not to get down on myself when you throw like a, a, you know, maybe a six mark 122. Yeah, that sucked, but you got to 120. You still got it there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I just, again, I I know what it takes to roll 14. I don't know what it takes to roll 15 because I've never done it. But I can I, I can only imagine. I can't find 50 more pins when I went 14. I can't find it. God, no. I know it's there. Do you think nowadays, yeah. though, we get to lane conditions? Do you think it's a confidence thing, too? You know, Tim and I, have, you know, we've talked before, and there are places where you bowl where it's like, do I want to hit the head pin on this, or do I want to hit the quarter pin and try and run down the side and have to hit the head pin for a spare? Do you think it's maybe you don't have confidence because you never know you're going to get a consistent break at some houses? Do you think that's an issue? Because I know back in the day when all the lanes were taken care of more consistently and everything was, you know, it. I don't want to say it was better back then. I'm just saying it was easier to maintain a bowl and alley and less expensive, honestly. And I, I don't want to talk out of my asshole because that's what I'm doing because Marky is the proprietor out of all of us and he would know. But I can only imagine back in the day when items were cheaper, it was a little easier to juice things up. But I'm just saying, is it the lack of consistency that builds to no confidence? You throw two marks in a row and all of a sudden you hit the head pin and punch. Like, if the decks are done better, do you punch? Does it splash more? Like, yeah. Do these guys bully these great scores because they were having more confidence? Because we all know when you get in a rhythm and start throwing two, three in a row. Right. Like you throw the ball looser, you get better breaks because you're throwing it looser. Well, I can I can tell you every every one of my 14s that I bowled, I knew going in there were a chance for a high 13 at least because I knew the house. Yeah. I also knew houses where I would go in. And be like, holy shit, if I hit 12.50, I got a chance to win. Right, right. Right, that's confidence, though, and, and that's that makes you bowl different, honestly, because you know in a tougher house, you you may you may walk slower because you know you have to, you don't slide as well or it's sticky, and then that changes how you bowl. And maybe you don't throw as many strikes, but you throw more spares there, whereas if you're throwing in a house where you're looser and you have more confidence, you go and you go like, man, if I bowl good today, I don't really need to hit the head pin because I know I'm throwing a good spare ball. You know, that bowling backwards concept we've talked about before. Well, let us let me ask the only person that's hit 1,500 in this group. What's Calvin, up? tell me what, it, what it's like. <laughs> You've I, done I, it. I, I don't, well, I mean, it wasn't, it, it was just that you were cost, I was I was on the head pin. Like, I, I think I maybe missed the head pin a handful of times. And it was just, but pocket, even when you missed pocket, it, did you, pocket. were you like, you threw it and you're like, ah, I'm going to get a break though. Well, yeah, if I missed it, I was only, I was only missing like the two or three pin. I wasn't mm -hmm. missing it like four pin, six pin. I was missing inside the two pin where it left the four horsemen every time. So it mm -hmm. wasn't, I was, I was always on, always in the head pin, always. I, I don't think there was maybe two three times where i had like a two and one split like all the pins were breaking up i think i made a couple two and one splits so like you know everything was going yeah so everything has to go to yeah, hit 15. Right. Yeah. yeah like i think one one three string set i think i went for 72 or something like that for three like and it was 
60, 40, 70, I think. Like it there was there was no missing. Like it was just smooth, flying, head pin, everything. It was great. It was I mean, I don't you can't really say anything else. You're not you're not throwing those you're not throwing those type of strings or type of matches without being on the head pin. You can't be right, on the two exactly. or three pin all the time. You can't oh, live right. there. So you're on the head pin at least eight out of ten, seven out of ten at worst. And getting breaks. Or and getting shots. breaks, right? Getting the extra pins to fall, making the making the wood, making everything. Like I just you know, I, I maybe I'm I a think a guy like a daily hat can do it if he gets in the right house with the right conditions. Because he throws a lot of strikes. I don't think you see a fifteen hundred like you look at that sheet and see it with one double. I think for somebody nowadays to do it, they're going to have to throw a lot of doubles and a few triples. Honestly, I think it's a guy like a daily or it's a guy that makes a lot of shots. Again, maybe I, I just, I, I looked at that sheet and I was just like, holy shit. That yeah. was, yeah. I wish that. Is I wish I'd the, seen it. I, that's that one of those sad ones. things about this is we yeah. don't have any video of that. Yeah. I, I uh, that would have been a recording. I, I oh. love, I love watching good bowling. Um, That's why folks record everything when you're bowling. If you're at a <laughs> tournament, just record shit. I, I just you never know what's going to happen. Haven't seen some amazing bowling. Um, I've seen 200 strings. I've seen, you know, 1480s. Um, I've seen 500s. I mean, I just I've seen 800s. I just mm-hmm. it's so cool to watch good bowling. It just, it's fun. It, it, it makes bowling fun. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're not going to have time for questions because we kind of went down some rabbit holes. So we will get to these and questions. And Calvin fucked the show up. And Calvin yeah, fucked the show bad. up. So yeah. um, I've got to figure out how to do this. Um, it's probably going to be a two-part audio. So please read the descriptions and you'll have two episodes episodes to listen to. And we'll do our best to make it one video on YouTube. Well, we'll see. Um, <laughs> I may just say screw it and post two videos and call it call it part good. one, yeah. part one, part two, Calvin. Part one, up. part two, because <laughs> Calvin is being Calvin. So, yeah. <laughs> um, you guys get anything before I end the show? Anyone get anything? No, good show. Oh, good. Yeah. good show. Okay. Oh, actually, wait, no. Uh, yeah. We had our first ever Queen of the River. Here on Sunday oh, no. mornings at King of the River, really? uh, nice. my friend Nick out De Almeida, uh, local fella here, uh, was the king for the last couple of weeks. His girlfriend Courtney came in and whooped his ass on <laughs> Sunday morning, so uh, he's nice. He's going to be sleeping out on the couch. The bed's all hers. She's the queen of the house. He's got nothing she to got do the about belt. it. He had to hand the belt <laughs> over to her. She nice. asked me if there was a Queen of the River plate, and I said no. Maybe next year I'll have one of those. The belt was expensive enough. <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't buy two that's uh, awesome but yeah no so uh sunday mornings come on down 9 30 riverwalk lanes if you're in the area it's 30 bucks for the tournament side pools and things like that come on in have a good time and you could be the king or queen that's cool thank All you right. maki guys if uh you know to our listeners to our viewers anything else if you have questions i know we didn't get to them sometimes we do sometimes we don't but just know that we do keep them mm-hmm. we will get to them eventually Yes. Uh, please send us your questions, your comments. Get us your rankings because we have that coming up here in another week or so. We've got some rankings coming up. Uh, get get us your rankings. Uh, you can send those to ripping the rack podcast at gmail.com. You can find us on Facebook and Twitter at ripping the rack. You can kind of find us on Instagram too, but we don't really post much on there. Uh, no. But you can find Jimmy's us. got to work on that. Yeah, you can find us at ripping the rack podcast. <laughs> Uh, you can find Big Booty Brian on his OnlyFans. Uh, oh, man. oh, wait, are you going to deactivate it? No, I got banned. Oh, oh booty. <laughs> Big Booty Brian got banned. He didn't show uh, enough booty. Something no. about a water buffalo and a nine iron and an ice cube. Oh, yeah, that happens. That was happens. That, was, it, was, was that the proverbial rear end hole in one? Skit that you went for and they didn't like it. I, I, yeah, I, you know well, how they used to say, "I'm Johnny Knoxville, welcome to Jackass." It started a little like that. Yeah, and he, oh, forgot, and he, oh. forgot, and he forgot the spatula. So, because yeah. that would have made it right there. Mm. Uh, Brian, where else can they uh, hear us? Well, Tim, they what can hear us on Spotify, Anchor, Breaker, iTunes, iHeartRadio, YouTube, 
Google Podcasts and wherever else you listen to your podcast mediums. Excellent. Very soothing. Yeah. Very soothing. Guys, appreciate it. Have a great week. Happy New Year. Hope everyone uh, had a safe and happy, healthy New Year. Yes. Uh, mm-hmm. Go 2020, deuce. Everybody better have yelled Jumanji at midnight on New I Year. I did. I did. So I saw that. Out of this. I love it. <laughs> All right. We'll see you guys. RIP, Betty.